Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be seeing if we can get this vintage Hobby Town Southern Pacific F unit to run again. This is a locomotive that I picked up off of eBay a couple years ago, and uh, unfortunately it stopped running. I have no idea why. I was going to try to run it during a live stream, and it just wouldn't start. Uh, it didn't seem to be making any sound, and there was no current draw, so I suspect it's an electrical problem. But I honestly have no idea what exactly is causing it. But anyway, we're going to try to get this thing running again, and uh, we're going to check on the lubricants and everything else just to make sure they're all in order. And hopefully by the end of this episode, we will have this fine engine running once again. Anyway, let's get started with this. Let's take it over the track and see what it does. All right, so we're just going to get this thing all set up on the track here and uh, see what it does. Like I was saying, uh, this thing, uh, last time I tried to run it, just wasn't showing any signs of life. And uh, I just saw a little blip in the current. But uh, it's not drawing anything, so I suspect whatever the problem is, is still the case. So anyway, we're going to uh, take this thing apart and hopefully we'll be able to figure out what exactly is causing the problem. I uh, really don't know. Maybe a loose wire. So to begin, we'll just pull off the shell. There's not a whole lot holding it on there, so uh, it's not too difficult to access. And uh, the first thing I'm going to look for is just the wiring to the motor. Uh, now, uh, this wire is quite crucial, and what we see is that uh, it doesn't appear to be connected to anything, so I believe that would be our problem right there. I don't know where this wire goes, but uh, there was definitely somewhere that it was attached at some point. And uh, the way a system like this works is, uh, you can see, this is connected to the rest of the motor. It's grounded, and that's why there's only one wire on uh, most... Uh, other locomotives you've got two, but in this case, since the whole frame is metal, uh, the frame can be charged with one power, and just as long as uh, one brush is isolated, you can uh, just run a wire around. So, uh, this has got to connect to somewhere which is also isolated, and that would be down by the wheels. So, I'm going to guess that it might have connected to that screw right there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but... I have a feeling that it might have either been soldered to that or wrapped around it. I really can't tell which. It looks like it was soldered to something. I've just been looking over the model a little bit more carefully and I happen to notice something, which is that you can see just some little threads of some wire. So uh, I'm now starting to think that it was actually connected to here. Now uh, this is obviously made of metal, um, but the truck itself is isolated from the uh, rest of this chassis. Uh, meaning just as long as this doesn't touch here or here, uh, this is all electrically isolated. So I think we'll uh, connect the wire up to here. This just seems a little bit better than that uh, screw down there. It's not going to interfere with the drive system. And uh, yeah, then we'll add some power to the chassis and just see if it starts. And if uh, that's the case, then we've got uh, that all figured out. I have to say, this is a pretty bizarre way, uh, I think, to wire something up like this, but uh, I, I don't really see a better way, and uh, furthermore, I think this is how it was wired up originally, so we'll just put it back to uh, how it was before, and uh, like so, that's all uh, good. It shouldn't interfere with anything. And just to make sure everything's in order, we'll take a couple wires, we'll put one on the main chassis, and I'll put the other on here. And what we're seeing is the motor is starting, so uh, we know that uh, this should all be good now. So that's good, but we're going to investigate some other stuff just to make sure everything else is in order, because uh, it has been a while since I had a look at this engine. You just never know if anything uh, might be kind of out of whack, particularly the motor I'm kind of interested in. This style of motor is very common on older locomotives, and uh, they're actually pretty good motors, but uh, they need to be maintained just like anything else. And uh, one thing that's really important to look after is the commutator. Um, obviously this is just something you want to, you know, check in general, but also if you have an older engine and it's smoking, this can be uh, a source, and I'll show you exactly what you need to look for specifically. You know, taking out these brushes can be kind of, uh, difficult. You just need to sort of wiggle them a certain way to uh, get them out. It's, uh, it's not something that I've exactly perfected. Uh, I'm not going to remove this one because it's soldered in, but basically you just need to kind of 
gently wiggle them back and forth, being careful not to bend them uh, while kind of pulling down a little bit. And uh, provided you do that right, you'll kind of just feel it and it will just pop right out. Uh, now that we can look in here, I can show you exactly what uh, usually causes problems with these motors. And it's right here. It's these uh, metal plates known as the uh, plates of the commutator. Uh, this needs to be kept clean, obviously, for it to work properly. Uh, but also, just in a moment, I'll show you exactly where uh, smoke uh, can uh, occur if uh, these are not maintained properly. With our uh, carbon fiber pencil, we're just going to uh, kind of rub this plate down. You'll see how it will remove all of that stuff, which is preventing this from getting proper electrical connectivity. And then we just do that all the way around. So uh, we've got that pretty well cleaned up, and I now want to show you exactly where uh, trouble can occur and end up causing smoke and damage to the motor. And uh, it's right here. It's these little spaces between the plates on the commutator, and you want to take something like a toothpick or anything just sort of soft, just as long as it's not metal, and uh, very gently clean these out. Now what can happen over time is the brushes, which physically rub against the commutator, uh, they're made of carbon, and uh, little bits of carbon will wear off those over time just because of the friction. And they'll often get caught between these plates. And what can happen is because they're uh, conductive, they will actually short these plates. And uh, they'll start burning the plastic, which actually holds the plates together, uh, which uh, can cause smoke. So if you have an older engine that's smoking, that can be why. Um, but the uh, thing that's bad about that is if it gets really bad, it can actually destroy this, which will pretty much junk the motor. So you want to make sure that these are clean uh, because uh, they can uh, cause you a lot of headaches up the road if you don't take care of them properly. Also, the reason I suggest not using anything too uh, firm is because you want these to be as smooth as possible. And if you were to go at this with something kind of metal and accidentally scrape one of the plates, you could actually make it... Uh, you could, basically, it would have kind of a bit of a grit effect, and you could actually sand the brushes right down, and that would, uh, well, ruin your brushes. And it would also make more little carbon deposits, which would get caught between those plates. So you want to look there for problems, because if you take care of this, it will uh, work good for a very long time. And uh, obviously, just like the uh, plates, you want to make sure that the brushes themselves are clean. There's no oil or any just kind of deposits or anything on there and you can see those are pretty clean. Some people lubricate their commutators. I personally uh, usually don't. Uh, the thing is there's a lot of friction there so I understand why people want to lubricate it but the thing is uh, if you are going to use a lubricant use something very light like uh, this is not the uh, correct bottle but uh, there's a company called Conducta Lube which uh, makes conductive lubricant. You want to be using conductive lubricant. Use something very light uh, and don't put at all uh, a lot because the thing is is that Oil tends to burn, and it can, uh, if it's conductive, it can also get caught between those plates and uh, burn, which is exactly what you want to avoid. So, uh, yeah, I would be really careful. Again, I personally don't usually lubricate my commutators, but it is something some people do. So, it's really up to you. But uh, however you go about it, just be careful. Anyway, we're now going to get this back in. You saw how I just sort of wiggled it in there. And then we just pinch that back around there, and it's all right. And go ahead and do the same on the other side here. And uh, just like that, our motor's all back together and taken care of. Now we're going to check the uh, oil in the gearboxes. So we'll just get the model in here. In this case, we uh, unscrew these screws at the bottom to uh, open up the uh, gearboxes. Some uh, engines have... Uh, most modern ones have two worm gears. These older ones actually have four. I don't know if you would even classify them as worm gears, but they, they do essentially the same job. And uh, they're all there. Uh, you can see there's uh, definitely plenty of oil, although it doesn't look to be in the greatest shape, so we might want to clean that out and put some fresh stuff in. There also doesn't appear to be any grease on the gears right here. Uh, which is really important because metal parts require a much, uh, they require a thicker lubricant. There's just more friction there than uh, plastic on plastic. So we'll open that up. Just pull all the, uh, maybe I'll sit out if we can. I don't know if you can on this particular model. They might be uh, fastened in by something. Nope, they're just a little bit stiff there. So we'll, we'll take those out and just clean them off with some rubbing alcohol. 
Well, now that we've got that out, we can take out the uh, rest of the drive system, being careful not to uh, lose any of these bearings. And uh, we'll just clean all of this off with some alcohol, and then we'll be able to uh, reassemble it. I dropped one of the bearings. <laughs> I'm just cleaning these out, and look how uh, dirty they are. They're like physical chunks of congealed grease that are just popping out. So uh, I'm quite glad that I decided to have a look in here, because uh, this definitely needed it. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, we'll have a look at this one too. It kind of looks like it's the same situation. Yeah, it's all in pretty, uh... <laughs> it's all in pretty desperate need to be cleaned. So that's why we do that. Alright, so we've got all the parts cleaned up and you can see they're looking a lot better. So we're now going to reassemble all of this. Now to uh, start, we're going to put the uh, bearings, which were on the outside here, uh, back on. We're going to put some uh, oil around those. Pretty much any surface that has uh, even a little bit of friction needs oil, so we want to make sure we're taking care of all of those. And uh, we'll just get those on and we'll drop this whole uh, piece into place like so. And uh, I'll just make sure all the bearings actually uh, get in there. There we go. And we'll give those bearings some oil too. So that's all good. And uh, now we're going to uh, begin putting the wheels back in. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of oil on each of the wheel bearings just before we put them in. Um, I don't think in this case it matters which way you put the uh, wheels in on this locomotive because the electricity can flow either way. Uh, on some locomotives, like ones made by model power, it does matter uh, which way you put them though, just because of uh, basically how the uh, there's wipers on one side on model power locomotives, so it is crucial. I'll have to see, I'm not sure actually because I just noticed this engine has, uh, you know, these this type of gears. It could be uh, they need to go a certain direction, but there's only one way to find out. Let's spin it and make sure it works. Yeah, those seem to be turning okay. And this is conductive lubricant too, so we'll also uh, improve the uh, electrical connectivity on uh, each of these wheels. And then obviously on this side, we just need to do the same thing, except we put the wheels in uh, opposite to how they are on the other side. And we lubricate each of those bearings with conductive lubricant. Uh, and now for these parts, which have a little bit more friction, we're going to uh, do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of grease on each of them because uh, there's more friction here. I was wrong. I thought these gears were metal. Uh, they're actually not. They're just plastic, which is not actually bad necessarily in this case because plastic gears, uh, there's just a little bit less friction there, so you don't have to put as thick of a lubricant, which is kind of nice. Uh, but, you know, these uh, areas still happen to contain a fair amount of friction, so we're just going to put a little bit of oil and grease and uh, it's going to uh, reduce the wear on the gears and reduce the friction. We'll just manually uh, crank that over. This might take a while, but we'll just kind of let it mix in there. And uh, now that all the lubricants are all properly mixed in, we're just going to put the truck covers back over, and we'll just uh, do a little bit of work on a couple other things, and then this thing should be, in theory, pretty much ready to go. Now, just before we uh, put the rest of this back together, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on each of the uh, various bearings around here. And let's not forget the motor ones. Tiny bit on that one back there. And uh, yeah, the engine should uh, pretty much be ready to go. So let's uh, get the shell back on this number here and uh, take it over the track and test it. All right, moment of truth here. I'm uh, pretty confident that this thing is going to start, just judging by really the problem only being a wire, but I am curious how... Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm very pleased with that. 
Wow. Seems to be running uh, pretty smooth, moderately quietly. I would call that quite a success. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And uh, with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching.